Hello everyone and welcome to the Weekend Slice and welcome to the first reviewish video that's going to go up on the channel. This is going to be a short opinion video on uh, Tesla Effect, a Tex Murphy adventure. Um, I've already done another video on this game, it's uh, the one where I played the demo uh, for this and that has been the best received uh, you know, thing on the channel so far with uh, 2,600 video uh, views or something close to that. So, um, just wanted to give you guys an update, although I haven't played this in a let's play or I haven't sort of put up any videos about it so far. Uh, and I did manage to play this game through from start to finish. Um, because, you know, as I mentioned in the other video, I had pre-ordered this. Now, let me quickly run down through what I think of this game. The good points. The good points are the fact that the game has an amazing atmosphere. Uh, it's a science fiction, cyberpunk, noir, you know, detective story uh, with a lot of comedy, a lot of uh, even some drama. Uh, there's a lot of weirdness in it. There's some supernatural stuff in it. Um, but um, besides that, um, the uh, music is absolutely fantastic. Um, it just manages to lift up every single moment in the game and make it just 10 times better. Um, the dialogue is actually very snappy and quite funny. And the acting from everyone with, you know, not necessarily exceptions, but one, of two, one or two of the people from the cast are maybe just a bit too, too uninterested or, or uninvolved compared to the others. But overall, the entire cast is absolutely amazing. The FMV segments, because this is an FMV game, meaning that whenever your uh, character has to interact with other characters or whenever there's uh, a story moment, you're going to get real live uh, actors in front of uh, you know computer-generated backgrounds. And believe me when I say it makes uh, for a very entertaining experience and um, all of the, the, the cast are absolutely great. Um, what else? Um, the puzzles, because this is an adventure game, and all adventure games have, you know, so have to have puzzles. The puzzles are actually quite good. Uh, they're not extremely difficult. They're not extremely obtuse. Uh, some of the older adventure games had that going on. This doesn't. There were a few occasions. You know, with a bit of a, a, fr a frustration element to them, but you know, overall, just solid puzzles that uh, are quite engaging. The content in the game, there's a lot of it. Uh, it took me around 20 hours to play through this from start to finish, and I enjoyed every moment of that. Um, the fact, and the biggest fact, the biggest positive is the fact that, uh, and the reason why I pre-ordered this game, is that it's made by the same people who made the other games in the series, the same people who started working on the Tex Murphy games in the late 80s. Uh, this is not a remake, a reboot, this is not a reimagining, this is not updated for modern audiences. This, ladies and gentlemen, is as if someone found the long-lost Tex Murphy game made in the year 2000 or 2002 and released it today. Um, it, it really does feel like that. It does make a few concessions to modern gamers, but this is nowhere near sort of a streamlined, uh, um, let's say, simplified uh, experience like, for example, the Walking Dead series, where the controls are actually, uh, what, what the controls, the puzzles and everything, I require minimum, uh, minimal, excuse me, um, element of deduction and involvement here th th there's a little bit of a of a uh, an attempt to put the player through some uh, trials and tribulations to get things going and to figure things out and it adds to the to the whole let's say je ne sais quoi of this uh, game it just makes it a bit special and it gives it a particular flavor that I don't know, to me is absolutely is absolutely fantastic and unique and should be is something that should be experienced and is worth uh, experiencing. Um, what else? Um, the story is, like I said, the story is actually pretty good. Um, 
it is a lengthy story, it does involve a large number of characters, it does get a bit complicated, and uh, it's just really, really, really interesting to, to it, go through it. It's not, um, uh, happily, it's not a predictable story, it's not um, a story that, you know, is sort of uh, easy to figure out from the beginning, and it, it, it actually makes it, uh, that makes it, uh, to, you know, a lot more enjoyable. It's not necessarily an original story, but uh, it also isn't, you know, the cookie cutter sort of bad guys versus good guys, and I'm going to take one for the team and sacrifice myself. No, you go, buddy, you just, boom, oh, they killed my brother, I'm going to, yeah, same crap that you've seen. I mean, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare fighter whatever uh, is coming out soon and th all the story trailers for that have been like we've seen that a million times before why isn't Call of Duty doing anything new well if you want to play a game that doesn't have that sort of cookie cutter storyline and a storyline that you've just become so accustomed to that you can figure it out even you know from when it says uh, when you please press next, uh, you, when you press new game in one of these new newer games, you you already know what's going to happen. Uh, Tex Murphy, uh, you know, uh, Tesla Effect isn't that. It doesn't have that. It actually has a pretty engaging storyline from start to finish. Now moving on to the not so positive things, but not negative either. The graphics aren't amazing. Now, as you can see, I've been walking up and down the street. Uh, the graphics aren't bad, there, there's plenty of atmosphere and there's plenty of, uh, you know, interesting things here and there, but they're not, you know, Crisis 3 uh, levels, this is not even as good as Titanfall or anything like that, which is pretty obvious, but it also uh, helps with, I don't know, strangely enough, with the atmosphere of the game. It really does feel like something that was uh, made a while back and uh, again going to that description of old school and which was never released and uh, it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb against the other games of the series that much um, the graphics aren't amazing but to me they're pretty pretty good and and they do their job and and they work and they're not horrible either i just don't i am i get it there's games out there who look a lot better but you know this is um, uh, this is and another thing that I want to mention about this. This was a kickstarted game, so people donated money to see this made. This was made for one million dollars. Considering the fact that you get a twenty-hour game uh, that is complete, it's not episode one, it's not part one, it's not missing elements, it's not broken down in parts, it's not anything. It's just a full game from start to finish. Uh, considering that, also considering the length, the 20 hours, the fact that they had to build sets, hire actors and do a whole bunch of stuff and they managed to do all of that within one million dollars, I'm not going to complain about the graphics not being amazing. I think that's just a ridiculous point of view to have. Considering that something like Broken Age, which is, was, uh, which is also a Kickstarter adventure game, and that is a point-and-click adventure game, a 2D adventure game, which, you know, I mean, there's plenty of engines that can do that for free these days. I, uh, It's not necessarily a technological marvel either. It looks great, but it's, you know, again, not that amazing, in my opinion. Uh, it uh, has been broken down in two parts, has had issues with completion, has not yet been released, is going through some development troubles. Um, has been in sorts of all sorts of articles and discussions on whether Kickstarter is an issue or not, and so on and so forth. That game raised a lot more money. I think what three million and something, three and a half million, three and three million and three hundred thousand on Kickstarter, and we still haven't seen a full game that you can play from start to finish. And also, the first part that was released was also kind of brief. Uh, overly simplified in a way from what I've read in the reviews. Now, I'm not going to issue a statement on that. I haven't played it myself, but just comparing that to this, it just, it just put that it puts it in perspective what a big success this game is. And it is a Kickstarter's uh, success story that you know, people should be mentioning a lot more than they are. Um, so, the negative points are the fact that it is an old-school game 
can sometimes cause some problems for someone who is not as experienced with adventure games and who is hey, not street slanted. I never noticed that before. And for someone who hasn't uh, played the other games in the series, um, so some of the puzzles, it, um, it is clear in some cases what you have to do, what item you have to find. But for some reason, the designers decided to place those objects in really, really hard to, to see and uh, d deduce positions and places, meaning that you spend some time just hunting around for them. Uh, it's not necessarily a problem, but there were three cases, two related to items and uh, one of them related to the solution to a puzzle, which was, again, pretty clear. I just didn't get what I had to do and click on. Sorry about that guys, sorry for the skip in the video, I had to stop recording for some reason, uh, for a specific reason actually, but I had someone knock at the door or some, and I just had to stop this. I'm not going to re-record this entire video, so going back to where I, what I was saying, so some of the puzzles are a bit too, com too cumbersome due to the old school design. So I had the case, three cases, like I said, where I had to either hunt down objects or uh, figure out a solution, and... Uh, I couldn't. I just didn't get it. I didn't understand what I was supposed to do, so I had to go online, and my surprise was that while I was standing there thinking that it's me, because I couldn't figure out the solution to the puzzle, uh, the truth of the matter was that um, other gamers were going, and a lot of other gamers actually, were going through the same um, issues that I was. So. I would put that down as a negative. Some of the puzzles aren't, you know, as well designed as they could be. Uh, another negative that I want to bring up is the fact that the multiple choice system, while it does add a lot of gameplay and time to the g to you know what you get in the game, because you have multiple choices, you have multiple endings, and all all of that good stuff. What happens is that sometimes depending on what which choices you make uh, one of the choices or you know if for example in let's say you have four situations where you can make a choice and you go one on one path one 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 and in the fourth question or segment or choice uh, situation you cho you choose something else that fourth uh, choice that you make which is different from the previous three can bring up uh, a cutscene or a dialogue, or a line, or something in the story that just doesn't gel with the previous uh, answers. It just seems a little bit um, jumbled from that perspective, and I think this is because they haven't really had um, enough money to sort of shoot that many um, scenes with the actors to cover all of the possible situations. Now, it's not necessarily uh, uh, awful or that bad, but it's not great either, and it could be better. Um, moving to another negative point. Um, sometimes there's technical issues in the design. Not necessarily bugs or something like that. There's issues with the design. Um, there's some puzzles, especially in one of the Seisen sections, which you'll which is sort of the secret organization that has this sort of temple and within that temple there's some puzzle situations of course there's some tests that they want you to take and um, the camera simply zooms out too far from the puzzle and there's no way to zoom back in and it sort of requires that you lean in close to your display and squint a little bit to try to see exactly what you have to do uh, it's not a biggie, but it is annoying. Um, and I think that those are pretty much the only negative uh, things that I have to say about the game. Um, w how should you treat this? You should treat this as an old school adventure game with FMV elements and puzzles uh, that are you know, also uh, not necessarily modern or fresh. Um, and if that is something that you want to, to uh, enjoy, to check out, I mean, I wholeheartedly recommend that you do. Um, 
it's a science fiction game. It is uh, a game with a tremendous amount of atmosphere. It's a game with a tremendous amount of humor. It's a quirky game. It's its own thing. And it has made me, you know, um, go and get the other games in the series from GOG.com. And I would really, really, really like to play the other games in the series. Uh, it has also the fact that there's multiple choices in the game and the quality of the game have made me decide to one day, uh, not that long uh, in the future, to replay this game and maybe see and again get play it, get another ending, and see another story strand. I don't know when that'll happen, but I'll probably do it on the in a let's play format on the channel. And that's about it. I mean. I had a lot of fun playing this, um, I really really enjoyed it, I think that uh, it's good enough to to be recommended even to people who uh, aren't major gamers who or who might not have played that many adventure games, it's just so well made that I think anyone in any sort of gaming category can play this without that many difficulties. Now I have never uh, being a major adventure game player and I didn't have that many problems playing through this game. Yeah, I mean some puzzles got frustrating and some situations were annoying because I couldn't really figure out what to do but I think this is just a part of the of the genre and it happens in other genres as well, it's no biggie. Um, if this looks like the kind of thing you'd be interested in, just give it a, give it a try, give it a spin. Uh, I'm not gonna give you a rating. I don't give. R I don't want to give out ratings in these videos in the reviewish sort of things. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer the following question: Should you bother with this game? Is this game good? And is this game worth playing? Definitely. Go out and get it when it's on sale. Or right now, I, ha I would actually recommend doing it right now because I want these guys to get enough money back from making this game so that there's a justification and an approval and a green light and a go ahead to make the next one. Because I really enjoyed my time with uh, Tesla Effect, a Tex Murphy adventure, and I think you guys will too. I mean, it's, it's a really good game. If you can accept the old school element that comes along with it and that is just a major part of what's going on here. You just can't, I mean, you can't ignore it, you can't go around it. This is not a game made with modern sensitive, modern sen thoughts behind it. There's no modern process involved at all in the making of this game. This is just an old school game that happens to be a 2014 one. Uh, with all those uh, things said, I'm uh, gonna leave it here, guys. Um, I'll, I'll see you on the YouTube channel. Uh, I'll see you on the Twitter feed. I'll see you on the we website, weekendslice.com. Uh, and I'll see you in the other videos as well. Hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope you found it informative. Uh, have a good one. Bye.